everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria Montefusco and I am a lover of all things when it comes to makeup. And today I'm gonna to be talking about makeup products that have been replaced in my collection. So this is a video inspired by Samantha March. She did a video like this recently on her channel where she talked about previous makeup favorites and then what replaced them. So I hope you all enjoy this video. I think it'll be a fun one to chat about. And if you all have any makeup products in your collection that have been replaced, let me know down in the comments down below. I'm curious to see what you all have to say. So with that, let's get into the video. So this is in no particular order. I just basically listed them in order of when I thought of them. So let's talk about the first one. So the first makeup product that has been replaced is MAC Fix Plus. So this was my favorite setting spray for a really long time, for I would say about a year or two. And as you can see, I'm almost done with this one. I'm trying to empty it. So this is a good setting spray. I feel like it sets your makeup, gives your skin a little bit more life to it. It looks nice, but there are two things I'm not a big fan of about this product. One, the sprayer. This sprayer sucks. <laughs> I'm just gonna be completely honest. I feel like it sucks. Um, this sprayer, when you spray it, it, you know when you have a bad sprayer, it like some of the mist is fine and then some of the mist is like droplets onto your face. I feel like this is what this does. So I'm not a fan of the sprayer. I also wish that this was a bit dewier. I feel like this gives a bit more of a matter finish to the skin, a bit. I mean, it's still relatively like natural, but I prefer like dewy. So that's why this has been replaced. And now what has replaced it? This Glow Recipe Setting Spray has replaced the MAC Fix Plus. So this is the Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist Hydrating and Glowing Radiance. This product name is spot on. Ultra Fine Mist. Yes, this is an ultra fine mist. Like I'll spray it for you all on camera. So like, look at that. That is a very fine mist. And it also smells really, really nice. It smells like watermelon, which I love. And it is hydrating and it does give you a glow. So for those reasons, this has definitely replaced MAC Fix Plus in my collection. I really love this stuff. And I think once I'm out of this, I'll probably repurchase it. The next product was a holy grail in my collection for many, 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 many years, but it has been replaced. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. This was my go-to under eye concealer since high school. And I'm now in my early 20s. So I've been using this concealer for probably like eight years. I mean, it's been a long time. So I was first introduced to this concealer by Tati. I know, throwback. So Tati always talked about this concealer, how amazing it was. I was like, ooh, I should try it. I loved it. My mom really likes it too. So this was a concealer that I used for a really, really long time because you know, when I was in high school and college, I didn't have the budget to like spend a lot of money on makeup products. Like the only products I spent a lot of money on were palettes. That was it. Everything else for me was from the drugstore. So this has a lot of good memories. I've repurchased this stuff. Who knows how many times I've gone through, who knows how many tubes of this stuff. It's a really good concealer but there is a concealer I like better. And that is the Pat McGrath concealer. So this is in the shade L2. Oh, and I forgot to mention the shade of the Maybelline. The Maybelline is in the shade 100 Ivory, which is the lightest shade. So this Pat McGrath concealer is amazing. It combines everything I love about the Maybelline concealer, which is it doesn't dry your under eyes. It provides good coverage. It's a good shade match for me, but this is even better because it provides more coverage without being drying. It's also really good for spot concealing, which I feel like the Maybelline was not really good for spot concealing. And I just feel like this is a formula I like slightly better. I feel like how it blends better. I like how it covers my dark circles better. So for that reason, the Pat McGrath has officially replaced the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. This is another product of mine that I'm not sure if I could live, really live without in my makeup collection. So the fact that this has been replaced 
is amazing to me. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have this in the shade One Fair slash Pale. So I believe this is the lightest shade and this stuff is awesome. I feel like it really makes your skin dewy. You can use this in so many different ways. You can use this under foundation, over foundation, as a highlight. You could even use it as like a tinted moisturizer. I mean, this stuff has a lot of purposes. It's very, very versatile. So I really like this stuff, but there is a product that has replaced it in my collection. And I'm sure you all can guess what it is. It's the Auric Glow Lust. I have this in the shade Morganite, which is the lightest shade. There's a few advantages of this over the Charlotte Tilbury. One, there's a pump. I love the pump packaging versus the Charlotte Tilbury which, let me open it up, has a wand. I feel like the pump is a lot more hygienic. I'm not like putting a wand on my face and like putting it back in, you know? So I do like the pump packaging better. I also think the products are really, really similar in, in like finish and application and wear and all of that. But I like the Auric a bit better just because I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury is a bit more metallic while the Auric is a bit more like naturally glow from within. So that's another reason why I like the Auric better. And lastly, I like supporting indie brands when I can. This is an indie brand. So this is Samantha Ravendahl's brand. She's a YouTuber. She has a lot of beauty videos. And so, of course, since there's an indie alternative, I am going to repurchase the indie alternative once I'm out of the Charlotte Tilbury, once I'm out of this. So I like both products a lot. They're very, very similar, but I do think this slightly edges out the Charlotte Tilbury. So that's why it's on the list. Let's talk about an eyeshadow palette. The only eyeshadow palette on the list. So what has been replaced? This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam. So I really like this palette. I haven't had this palette for long, but I used to use my mom's whenever I'd visit my parents. And so I have a lot of memories with this. This is what it looks like if you all are not familiar. As you can see, this sultry shade is like hella broken. It came like that. So I'm not gonna like hold this up a bunch because I don't want this to like crumble all over me. <laughs> but this is my soft glam palette. It's pretty well loved. Um, I've had this in my collection for I think like a year or two. And I do really like it. I like Anastasia's formula, but there is a palette that has really replaced this one where I don't really even reach for this much anymore. If I want neutrals, I'm reaching for the Nautilus side by side. This palette is awesome. It's awesome. So I'm gonna open it up and show you all what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. Here's why I like this better than the Soft Glam. A, I feel like the formula is better. The mattes are really pigmented, really easily blendable like the Anastasia mattes, but they're like not as powdery. I just feel like they're an upgrade an upgrade from the Anastasia formula. The metallics are light years better. I mean, the Soft Glam came out, I don't even know how long ago. I'll put the year somewhere over here once I look it up, but eyeshadow formulas have really improved since the age of Soft Glam. So because of that, I like this palette better too. And these metallics are just beautiful on the eyes. I mean, they do not hold a, I mean, the, the Anastasia does not hold a candle to this. And last but not least, I like that there's more colors in here, more options. And I also like the variety of neutral tones. So you have warm tone neutrals, you have cool tone neutrals, and you have neutral tone neutrals. Well, I feel the Soft Glam very much leans warm tone neutrals. So for that reason, the Nabla Side by Side has really replaced the Soft Glam in my collection. Let's talk about blush. So as you all probably know, if you've watched my videos, I love cream blush. Cream blush is my favorite formula of blush. I will love cream blush forever. I love cream blush. I just feel like it's really easily blendable, gives a dewy appearance to the skin. You can make it really sheer or really pigmented, like really easily. You can really easily control how much like rosiness you want on your cheeks. I love cream blush. So my favorite cream, cream blush used to be, and this was I think the first cream blush I ever tried. This is the Fenty Cream Blush. This is the shade 09 Cool Berry. So I'm gonna open this up and show you all what it looks like. So here's what the shade looks like. I have multiple shades of these Fenty blushes, but this is just the one I pulled out to show you all. So this is like a very cool toned, like purple shade. It's really pretty and I feel like it's a really unique blush shade, but there's a few things that 
I have a little bit of a problem with with these Anastasia blushes. A, this packaging is super tiny, but you only need a very small amount to get the amount of pigment that I want on my cheeks, so I can forgive that. But B, I don't know. There's just something about these blushes that I wish were a bit different. Like they're fine, but I'm not like in love with them, you know? So like, here's what that shade looks like on my arm. It's pretty, but there's a formula I like better. And that is Ritua de Fee. If you all know me, you all know I'm a Ritua de Fee stan. I love their products. So I have two different formulas of their cream blushes. I have the Color Nectar Pigment Balm, which is this smaller blush. I feel like this formula compares more apples to apples with the Fenty. I also have the Inner Glow Cream Pigment and Lust. So the Color Nectar Pigment Balm, again, very small packaging, but I feel like this is like the same amount of like creaminess and sheerness as the Fenty. I'm just gonna swatch this on my hand. So as you can see, the Color Nectar Pigment Balm is a lot more like warm toned pink, while the Fenty is a cool toned, like pink is pur pinkish purple. So shade wise, Ladybug does not compare to Coolberry. Also, by the way, Ladybug was a limited edition shade, so I don't think they have it anymore, but I just like this formula slightly better. I feel like it wears better on my cheeks. It stays dewy all day. It's just really pretty. The, the pigment doesn't fade as much. So I like this a lot more than the Fenty personally. And then the Inner Glow Cream Pigment. This is in the shade Lust. This is just like a beautiful, like dark brownish red. This gives a lot more pigment off the bat than the Color Nectar Pigment Balms. So look at that amount of pigment, like that's crazy. I also feel like this could be like a good, like blushy bronzer for somebody. But anyways, it's a whole other story. So Ritual de Fee has a blush formula for whatever you want. If you want a cream blush that's more sheer, more dewy, more buildable, definitely recommend the Color Nectar Pigment Balms. If you want something that's more, a little bit more matte and more like bam pigmented, I definitely recommend the Inner Glow Cream Pigment. So I like those formulas a bit better than the Fenty. And I actually just had to use the next product I'm talking about. So this is the Neutrogena Cleansing Towelettes. So these are makeup wipes. They're sold in like every drugstore ever. I feel like everybody and their mother has used these at least once in their life. I just use them to remove those blushes from my fingers and my hand. This is what I used to use to remove my makeup for years and years and years. Only the Neutrogena ones. I like them, they're good, but I realized a few things about makeup wipes. A, they are really bad for the environment, especially if you don't have biodegradable makeup wipes, which I don't think these are biodegradable. Yeah, it doesn't advertise it, so I assume these are not biodegradable. So these are not good for the environment. This is just an old pack that I have that I need to use up, and B, they don't do the best job at removing your makeup. Like you'll still have a lot of makeup residue, mascara, all that stuff on your face even after you go with this makeup wipe a few times. So I have completely changed the way I remove my makeup. And now I use a cleansing balm. And my favorite cleansing balm that I've tried is the Vanilla Clean It Zero Original Cleansing Balm. This stuff is awesome. A, this is a ton of product in here. Like I have used this stuff for months and months and months. And I'll show you how much I've used of this. I probably like 40% done. And there's a lot more left to go. So this stuff will last you forever. You don't need that much. I like there's a spatula on here. I feel like it smells pretty good too. So I don't mind that. Um, and it just removes your makeup so easily. This is the first step of my double cleanse. I just wet my face in the shower. I take this uh, on the spatula and then I wipe, wipe it all over my face. I just go in circular motions and this melts off the makeup. I take a makeup eraser, wipe everything off, and then I'll go in with my second cleanser. So this stuff's amazing. I feel like my skin has improved a lot since I started using a cleansing balm. It's just better for your skin, better for the environment. So what's not to love? Next, let's talk about mascara. So I was going to talk about how Maybelline Great Lash has been replaced in my collection by a different mascara. But since I've tested out a new mascara, the mascara that replaced Great Lash has now been replaced by this mascara. So like, mascara -ception. So the mascara that's been replaced is the Marc Jacobs At Lash Mascara. I have a new one right here because I'm currently using some samples of different mascaras. So 
I'll open up this packaging real quick. This is what it looks like. This is a really, really good mascara. I really like this mascara. The packaging is also really cool. I like that too, but this gives you a lot of length, a little bit of curl. It lasts all day, doesn't transfer, doesn't smudge. I like this stuff, but I am currently wearing a mascara and I wore this mascara yesterday as well that I like a lot better. Like this is my new holy grail. I can say that even after two days. And this is the Chanel Le Volume Stretch. So this mascara is awesome. I'm wearing it today. I did not even curl my lashes and my lash, this, when applying this mascara, it just like curls your lashes for you. It gives you so much length to your lashes. It gives you a really nice amount of volume. And this mascara is so good that even my boyfriend was like, your, your eyelashes look good. And if he notices a difference, like, yep, I'm a winner. I'm converted. This is the best mascara that I've personally tried. So I've only used this for a few days, but it is amazing. And once I'm out of my other mascaras that I've been using, the sample, that full size Marc Jacobs one, I'm definitely going to purchase a full size of this mascara. So Le Volume Stretch is awesome. And let's talk about the last product. So we're gonna go into brows next. So I've been getting really into like the soap brow trend, even though my brows don't want to stay, you know, all fluffy and stuff. I like the brow wax. I, I really like a brow wax. So the brow wax I first tried was this Patrick Ta brow wax. I got it in the tinted shade. This stuff is basically done. I should probably throw it out because I don't know how much more product I can get in here. But the way this works is you basically like spray some setting spray or some water you take your spoolie, you rub it in, and then you like fluff up your brows and stuff. This is good, but I have a few like gripes with it. A, because it's like tinted, it will like, like get onto your skin, especially if you have thinner brows like me. So I'd always have to do like some cleanup after I use this. B, I feel like it holds your brows in place for like an hour or two and then they just go, bleh, they just fall flat. So because of that, I'm not a huge fan of it. And also the the point they have to like spray setting spray in there it's not a big deal it's just kind of annoying to like remember to do that so i have a product that's similar that is better in my opinion and this is the pink honey wonder wax a this stuff is huge look at how much product you get in here i'm never going to finish this b it's from an indie brand you all know that i love supporting indie brands so that's a plus c it smells really nice smells like citrus. I like that. <laughs> also, um, some more advantages to this over the Patrick Ta is that it's clear, so it doesn't like transfer like brown into my like foundation and stuff, so I like that. And also, you do not need any sort of like activator to use this. Like it the activator is already in the product. So like you take your spoolie, you go like in the middle of that hole and then you just like do 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 like no spray nothing and also this packaging excuse me is genius like there's a little hole in the middle and you just take your spoolie and just you go around that hole like it's super smart packaging and also another advantage it's so much cheaper than the patrick ta like this is pretty affordable even though it comes to the uk or comes from the uk excuse me like it's, it's pretty darn affordable. So all of those things combined, this has definitely replaced the Patrick Ta brow wax in my collection. So those are all of the products that have been replaced in my makeup collection. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was really fun just like going through some of my old favorites and seeing like what products I now use in place of them. So if you all have anything that you'd like to say that's been replacing your makeup collection, leave them down in the comments. Definitely curious to hear that. So with that, if you liked this video, please like this video. Definitely helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you like me, please subscribe. Would definitely appreciate that. As always, what is on my face is listed down in the description box below. And with that, thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.